everyone comes in, I would love for um, you to introduce yourselves. So put your name, the company you are with in the chat um, and where you're calling in from today. And as we wait, we're going to hear from, from our leaders at our accredited companies. So Brian, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Brian Wood. I'm the president of FiberCore here in Cleveland, Ohio, and we are the manufacturers of the eco bedding products, which are some paper based bedding for small animals and birds. Um, great for gerbils, hamsters, guinea pigs, that kind of thing. Made from recycled paper stocks, so it's environmentally friendly and packed with the help of a remarkable group of adults with developmental disabilities. We've been doing it here for about 15 years now. Great. Uh, Maggie. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm morning voice. Morning voice. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Maggie McCarran. Um, that is my lovely dog, Daisy, that you heard barking in the background. I am one of the co-founders and the daughter of our top dog. My name uh, is Star Dog within the company. I do brand and customer experience. And we are Portland Pet Food Company. We make all natural human grade meals that are 100% made and sourced entirely in the USA and are shelf stable for two years. And uh, I will look forward to talking to you about our sustainable practices. Great, uh, Chantal. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Chantal Sarlan. I am the co-owner and uh, along with my husband, uh, we run the third generation uh, of Moderna products. Originally, um, they originated in Belgium. So the third generation, it was the company was founded in 1932 by my grandparents. And then uh, we have two plants, two production plants today. We are manufacturing plastic pet supplies. Uh, so in Belgium and also since 2015 in uh, Gaffney, South Carolina. And the rest Thanks. I'm gonna keep for later. <laughs> really yes, exactly. Um, and uh, as everyone's coming in, please introduce yourselves, put your names um, in the chat and where you're calling in from today. Um, and last but not least, uh, Alex. Yes, so um, my name is Alex McKinnon. I'm the founder and CEO of Kin. We're located uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we make health products for pets, including the Clean Bowl, which is a germ-free bowl, which ensures that dogs and cats have healthier hydration, healthier nutrition, and healthier oral wellness. We also make the Kudos Pill Crusher, Splitter, and Concealer, and both of our products uh, guarantee healthier pets who live uh, healthier, longer lives, and uh, we're excited to be here. Great. Well, thank you all four of you for being here, um, and we are going to get started now um, with the programming. Um, so why are we here today, right? This is the third of our uh, Meet the Buyer series, and um, my name is Sarah Hutcherson, and I'm the accreditation manager here at PSC. And this is an event that highlights and connects values-driven retailers um, with leading sustainable pet companies that are verified in the pet sustainability accreditation. We're here to learn about um, how the retail landscape is changing, how sustainability is playing a role in the product selection process, um, as well as get inspired by some of these companies' impact stories. So we are uh, over 150 member companies strong. Uh, these companies are taking action in myriads of ways and we're excited to help them along their sustainability journey as the Pet Sustainability Coalition. We do this through um, working one-on-one -on -one through with these companies, providing um, company improvement programs and support, as well as addressing um, larger scale environmental issues where we encourage collaboration between different companies where there's just too big of an environmental problem or social problem that um, one can handle. For today, we have a really exciting lineup. Um, we're, this is a, an exciting um, event within this series because not only do we have um, an amazing um, retailer who is a benefit corporation, but we also have um, Etail Pet here um, who helps indie retailers navigate the e-commerce landscape to emphasize the importance of local shopping um, and really being part of the community. Once we hear from both of them, we will dive into um, the accredited companies and hear their impact stories. And then we'll move into a Q&A at the end of the session. 
And throughout the session, please put your questions into the chat. Um, those will be answered at the end and I'll be checking in. So more questions, the merrier. Um, that's, that's why we're here. So with that, um, I'm going to switch to um, Bure's uh, presentation. Um, so if everyone um, besides Bure would like to turn off their video, that'd be great. So I'm pulling this up and as I do, I have an introduction for you as well, but I'm going to put this up first. Okay. Let's expand this in. Okay. Are you able to see that? Let's see. Yes. Okay. Great. Well, let me introduce you. I'm sorry. I, the multitasking was not working. Um, <laughs> so, so excited to have um, Beret, the CEO of Etail Pet here today. Um, we are um, here to learn more um, about your story. And before um, Beret dives into that, I just want to provide a proper introduction. Um, so Etail Pet was founded by um, uh, Beret and her team to begin to think about how um, it began as a chain of brick and mortar stores in Southern California. Um, it quickly became evident that um, there was this newly formed brick and mortar chain was going to succeed or even survive stores needed to have an online presence, right? With Amazon and with Chewy. Um, looking at the gap between her needs as a pet store owner and the off the shelf options available for retailers, um, Beret embarked on creating custom software to solve her own pain points specifically targeting e-commerce and making the process informative and actionable. Um, Bray knew that serving pet parents on a personal and digital level was a pain point in the indie pet industry. And so she took her pet industry knowledge, her USC finance degree, and passion to help local businesses and created a solution to empower independent retailers across the country. In March, 2018, Etail Pet was born and has been on a mission to empower independent pet businesses in the digital age. So with that, I'll hand it over to you and please just let me know um, when you like the slides switch. Great, thank you, Sarah, for the introduction and thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for everybody who took time out of their day to join us. Um, we can move on to the next slide, Sarah. So uh, we have about 10 minutes to spend together and I'd like to first start with talking about diversity and inclusion. And then we're going to talk about the sustainability, uh, sustainability effects of our technology and, and what that does to the world. So with the next slide, we're going to start looking at what does, what does the role of women look like in technology today? And so, you know, there aren't a lot of women in technology, although that is changing. And uh, as uh, grammar schools and middle schools and high schools have more programs for women to join or girls at that point to join uh, engineering programs. We, you know, that, that's gonna change a lot and with all of us spearheading this today, but uh, there aren't a lot of women in technology. And that's something that is uh, near and dear to my heart and we really strive to try to change that. So in the next slide, we will see that not surprisingly, um, you know, there's, there's very few women at an exec level in technology. And it was evident over the last 10 years how much technology was changing our lives. But I do believe that over the last 12 months with COVID, this really, this really accelerated the role of technology in our lives. Um, this, even this Zoom meeting would have never happened a year ago, probably. Um, but now we all know Zoom and now we all know how to get on Zoom, including senior citizens, and three-year-olds. So it is really important that we do what we can to make it fair and equitable for everybody to join in the technology game. So with the next slide, Sarah. This is our team. This is what our team looks like. This was our holiday uh, meet. This is our holiday party actually, because we're all remote, obviously. Um, but you can see lots of different colors and faces and there's women and there's men. and 
there's all sorts of ages in our group. And we're really proud of the people that work at Etel Pet because the diversity really brings a new edge to how we think as a company. Next slide. I'll spend a little bit of time talking about our core values um, as a company, and we take these very seriously. So we don't necessarily look at people for you know, what their race is or their gender is or where they come from or what their age is, but we really talk about how we work and how we think about everything based on these core values. So first and foremost, being retailer first, um, maybe Penny who from Big Bad Wolf can talk about that a little bit. Um, we love our jobs, so we, we understand that it is a job, but we wanna make sure that everybody is enjoying what they're doing. That brings passion and it brings, you know, new ways to solve problems because people are creative about it because they, have, they care about it. Uh, we get it done. Obviously, we need to uh, be very productive. And being curious is a really important cornerstone of a personality trait for someone in our company. Because we are in software, things are constantly changing and we need to always be curious. Um, next slide. Uh, transparency is super important to us in this day and age. Um, and inspiration and smiling is really important to us because we, we understand that technology can be very intimidating to people. And so we want to make sure that we are guiding people in slowly, making sure that we understand um, what the fears are about it and just break down those barriers and, and bring people into the digital age. So with the next slide. So what kind of strategies can we implement to achieve diversity? Next slide. So what can we do? So one of the things that we practice at Etel Pet is that we hire based on a person's potential and their disposition and their attitude more so than just on the resume in the background. So we wanna make sure that we're looking at someone in a holistic way and not just um, thinking about, oh, you know, I need to have this experience or that experience. We want to make sure that we're bringing in all sorts of thought processes into the mix because we believe that that produces better results. Um, we require a diverse uh, pool of candidates before we make a choice and really important to give credit when credit is due. So this has been something that's been changing, I believe, over the last 20 years, starting with how people parent today versus 20 years ago. And all of that can, as you know, as you have multiple generations in one company working together as a team, mashing that all together to produce something really special is, is something that we take pride in at Etel Pet. And so next slide. So what do you get out of it? What are the benefits of diversity? Um, diversity brings new perspectives. It brings a wider talent pool. It creates more innovation and it provides for better employee performance. So if you have a group of people that all come from the same background, whether that be social uh, demographic or, or from the same line of education and in the same, you know, if they've all been educated the same way, they all have the same kind of degree, then you're not gonna get as much diversity in your, and you're not gonna be able to think out of the box as much because everyone is just coming from the exact same place. So what you get with the new perspectives and innovation are different ways to solve problems. And there's always more than one way. So we, we take pride in that. And as you saw in the picture originally with um, all different you know, ages, colors, um, gender, we believe that that really has benefited Etel Pet to get you know, a, something, a product out there that can really help change the industry. And next slide. So this is a quote that I really enjoy because I think it really tells the story. Diversity is being invited to the party and inclusion is being asked to dance. And I think that's really important that when we think about diversity and inclusion, it's not just about checking boxes. It really is about providing an equal playing ground for everyone and giving everyone a seat at the table and listening to everyone's voice. So this is a quote that we really enjoyed and I, and I hope that that maybe takes it or opens up some thoughts on, for some people in the audience. So from here, we're gonna move into sustainability. And one of the things that I really enjoy about Etail Pet in general and a consequence of Etail Pet. So as a company ourselves, you know, we're not a physical product company. We are a software company. 
you know, we, we did what we could while we were in an office to try to be um, as sustainable as possible in terms of being less everywhere and encouraging people to ride their bikes to the office, um, working from home if, if the commute was too long. Um, but really, what really matters and where we can really make an impact in the next slide is that we stop the cardboard boxes. Right. So we give the ability where our goal is to have digital ordering for all of the independent pet stores across the country. And what that does is that it stops that cardboard from people. People are going to shop online regardless. Right. There's a lot of research showing how much uh, pet supply dollars are going to move online in the next five years or in the for, forever. And so one of the things that happens with Etel Pet, if we look at the next slide, is that we take care of that last mile. So whereas there could be a warehouse, and then from that warehouse, there's a truck that's bringing cardboard boxes into all of the homes. What Etel Pet does is it essentially turns that pet shop that is already inside that neighborhood into that digital ordering platform. And it's, it's already you know, helping reduce the amount of cardboard, reducing the carbon footprint, because the product is already in that neighborhood. So this is one of the things that I really enjoy because getting rid of that last mile is super important for for the planet and you know it's a, it's a very efficient way to distribute the products to the very last mile and the next slide so um one of the things that really surprised me when we launched our platform was that we offer uh stores independent pet stores brick and mortar stores ability to have an online store where people can either buy online and pick up in store or have local delivery. And I always thought that buy online pick up in store was going to be, you know, somewhat of an afterthought. I thought, oh, if people are buying online, they want to deliver to their home. But what, what happens in reality is that about 80% of the orders that happen online are for pick up in store. Uh, people don't necessarily want things delivered to their home. And so, you know, this, this really, really gets rid of the last mile and creates a smaller carbon footprint. Next slide. So that is the end of our 10 minutes together. Thank you very much, PSC, for all of the work that you do. Uh, very important work uh, with diversity and inclusion, as well as sustainability for, uh, for the planet. So thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate that. And again, I see that there are some questions coming in. Um, so really, we'll answer those at the end. Um, Penny, if you could um, turn on your camera, I'm going to pull back up the slides. Let's see. Um, and Penny uh, is joining us today um, from outside of DC. Um, and she is with the Big Bad Wolf, um, and they believe food is medicine. And as such, um, the better quality and the sourcing of their food, the better health and longevity. Um, they take into consideration a number of factors um, when making determinations on what foods should be stocked in their store. Um, they look at transparency, fair labor conditions, simple, wholesome ingredients, non-GMO ingredients, as well as really thinking about the sustainability uh, piece, as well as the local um, sourcing impact. Um, so Penny, I would love if you want to just kind of start off and share how you um, began to partner with Etail Pet um, and what that partnership has looked like. Great. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, so Betty and I met two years ago, I think, at one of the uh, trade shows in Pennsylvania. And one of her colleagues grabbed me and said, we really want to show you this platform. And I was like, okay. I was uh, very excited once I got to sit down and see it. And uh, Betty actually came out and we started collaborating on how with our platform, where we had had a delivery service going for several years and we're doing um, uh, curbside somewhat how we could move on to her platform and utilize the POS and our online system and have it help us to uh, 
build our brand, basically. Uh, it's been very interesting. I, Betty and I have been working really closely together with her team to uh, look at how we can expand their platform to work with other retailers and be able to off, have them be able to offer more in terms of if they want a delivery service, because as we all know with COVID, that's become a big thing. And we've been doing it a long time. And we've really uh, tried to bring in sustainability on that front as well. Uh, I loved at the end when Betty was talking about the cardboard boxes. Uh, one of the things that we've done for years is all of our incoming shipments, we reuse probably 75 to 80% of the boxes that come into our store, go back out with a delivery. Um, so there's a lot of ways in which as a retailer, you can, you can uh, really capture and reuse and recycle things and have it work really well and save you money, <laughs> which is a wonderful thing too, right? Um, so do you want me to talk a little bit about being a benefit corp? Yeah, my next question, yes, exactly. You know where we're going. <laughs> I was going to ask you about your um, being a benefit corp, right, and how that plays into um, your operations and product selection process. So um, we, we actually became the first benefit corporation in the country in 2010. And uh, that, that legislation is uh, part of a people, uh, three people, philosophy that was brought to uh, bear by Representative Jamie Raskin, who many of you have probably seen recently, and he is actually my neighbor. So <laughs> he brought this wonderful concept, and uh, we, we ended up becoming a, the first benefit corporation in Maryland and the U.S., and then when benefit corporation became available in DC, we converted our DC store to that also. Um, on our front, when we filed for Benefit Corp, we did it with the intention of supporting local economies. So for us, it's very important to look at what we're purchasing and really push up to the front regional and local makers. Um, at the time that we did this in 2010, it wasn't that popular, but as we've seen the new generation come up, it's really important to them to buy local and support local makers. And we're seeing it through our incubators that are starting, and we're seeing it through uh, a lot of things that PSC is doing with trying to uh, negotiate who, who the makers are, and then can you get them in your immediate area? So, um, on our slide that we've got up, Chippen is actually a pretty new company. A uh, wonderful young woman from this area runs it who went to Harvard for business. <laughs> and this is using cricket protein. And you're going to see insects coming up a lot in pet food and snacks. We're already seeing it. And it's because it's such a sustainable protein to use. Um, I think to raise crickets to get into here, it's like one gallon of water versus gallons and gallons for any other type of meat-based protein. Um, so for us, it's looking at the products, looking at how they're made, sometimes working with the makers on their packaging to see if they can do something that's more sustainable in their packaging. And that's something we've done since we opened our store 16 years ago. Uh, this all feeds into you know, things not having to travel so far. Um, and if we're uh, looking at the ingredients coming in and being able to, like tomorrow I'm going down to pick up spoil me rotten biscuits in town, they don't have to ship them to us. We'll just send our driver out to pick them up. So I think all of these things help us become a better company with a great story to tell from basically how you buy things to how you're 
cleaning, how you're doing things in your store. These are all things that I think every, every retailer can tell their customers about and their customers are going to love them for it. They're absolutely yeah. going to love them. Definitely. Definitely. And do you have, my last question for you is, you know, for retailers that are looking to adopt um, sustainability into their product selection and their operations, are there some initial first steps that you recommend they take? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the best first steps is to visit you guys, the Pet Sustainability Council, and look at the brands that are on there. Take a look at how they're made, where they're made, and be able to um, ask questions. That gives you a great insight if these companies are working with PSC to um, get started, you know. Well, so maybe you're not doing, you're doing more standard foods and treats and gear. Pick out a couple of companies, try them out, have your staff learn about them and tell the story. Um, as an example, I, I'm gonna look at the slide again with Farmhounds. Farmhounds is this wonderful, I think they have three stores in Georgia, but they, all of their products, if you flip that bag over, tell the story of what farm it came from. So these are great ways for you to engage your customers, test out new products, and I will tell you, I can't keep that on the shelf because of the story it tells because they've done such a good job with their packaging on it. So I think you can start by looking at what options you have, what fits in your store, what you think is going to be good for you, and then just try them out and have the manufacturer that you're getting it from, call them, see if they can do a training and work with you to help build their brand. Great. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you um, sharing your expertise with us. And um, I know I have a couple more questions, but I'll save them for Q&A um, until then. <laughs> um, so thank you, Penny. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. We are going to move on to our accredited companies. And our first company that is going to pitch today is Moderna. Um, and Chantal, if you want to turn on your video and yes. I'll let you take it from here. So yes, hello, good morning everybody. Good evening from me. Um, I'm calling in from Belgium, so it's uh, seven, 7 something p.m. by now. Um, welcome, happy to share our uh, experience, our story. Uh, as form of introduction, uh, as I said earlier, together with my husband Bart, we formed the third generation of a 100% family-owned company. Uh, we are a manufacturer of plastic pet supplies, uh, originated in Belgium, uh, and we have two plants now because since uh, 2015, we are also manufacturing in the USA in Gaffney, South Carolina. So our ambition uh, with Moderna is to be a long-term valued partner for companies within pet specialty on a global scale. That could be um, through own brands or our Moderna brand. Um, we would do that with a specific set of values we have. Uh, we call them the Moderna DNA. So um, all of this combined um, at a certain point that was back in 2017, 2018, um, we wanted to start taking action, create some impact uh, proactively because uh, we are manufacturer of plastic pet supplies so we know that perception is, uh, is a, a tricky thing. Uh, sometimes perception becomes reality if we don't take care enough. So we started working on a sustainability roadmap. Um, we know the plastics. We also uh, want, we are exporting to more than 70 countries on the so the global scale, the logistics supply chain uh, side of it was also worth looking at. So there were lots of opportunities uh, where we wanted to do better. So we, um, we um, have written that Moderna Green Pact, um, where we set ourselves specific goals. It's based on the 17 SDGs you are probably familiar with. 
so we picked six of them, the three, four, five, eight, 12, and 14. So we can work towards uh, certain goals. Um, obviously, we didn't do that alone. We didn't invent all of that um, by ourselves. So back in 2018, uh, we got connected to the Pet Sustainability Coalition, where we thought, okay, this is a great partnership because um, it aspiring a bit the same goal, which is uh, proactively work towards a better future for the entire pet industry, making sure that we are doing the right things uh, together. So um, they built that roadmap and initially there is a lot of uh, low hanging fruit and quick wins, but combined with the accreditation program, uh, it really pushes you to take the next steps and to reinvent yourself, um, to transpire that through your whole organization. So you need your entire team uh, with you to achieve those goals and do that together because um, alone you don't achieve anything, not alone as a person, not alone as an organization. We need the whole supply chain involved to um, create that impact and to reach those goals. Uh, in our Moderna Green Pact, we talk about the four R's, which are uh, re-educate. Uh, we want to explain to our partners, our customers, why we do things and how we do things. Um, and then the three other R's, um, because people always talk about recycling, but basically there is also reduce. Uh, there's a lot of things we can reduce. Um, there is also reuse. Uh, we don't stand for anything uh, single use uh, in our products that we manufacture. And basically at the very end comes recycle. So that's uh, something we, we, we think is very important that we share that with um, our partners, our uh, stakeholders. So they really know that um, as a manufacturer of plastic pet supplies, um, the perception uh, is a bit turned around and we see that we don't do single use. Um, we use plastic, but we have set that specific goal, which is um, using 35% of our yearly volume um, processed with recycled materials. So um, adding that with um, more goals, um, we are going down that road of the sustainability roadmap uh, all our employees are paid the living wage, which we find is very important. Um, so there is a lot of goals. Uh, there is a lot of enthusiasm within the team. So I think um, thanks to the effort that the Pet Sustainability Coalition is doing every day, uh, I want to grab this opportunity to also thank you, to push us, to inspire us and uh, to make next steps. And that accreditation program is a good example of it, where we are pushed to take those next steps. Uh, if there's any questions, um, more than welcome to uh, throw them in and we will um, tackle them at the Q&A. Yes, thank you so much, Chantel. Moderna has, again, really um, recommend asking questions around how they're using their recycled materials and their um, emphasis on paying employees a living wage because it's really cool stuff. Um, all right, let's move on to Alex from. Alex, are you there? Yes, I'm sorry. I was just getting um, unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're good to go. All right. Well, uh, Welcome everybody. My name is Alex McKinnon. I'm the founder and CEO of Ken. And today I'm here to share with you the Ken and Opark Mutual Joy Sustainability Story. In terms of context and to set the scene, this is a story about solving three health and societal problems with the four pillars of sustainability result resulting in joy for all. Basically, pets spit out pills and stay sick, which is very sad. Pets suffer many illnesses and health issues due in part to bold germs, which dishwashers do not get hot enough to kill and can take up to four years off of their life. This is also sad. 
And about in the United States, about 60% of persons with disabilities of working age are unemployed. And we think that's tragic. And the conflicts in our story is OPARC's team of developmentally disabled adults needs re rewarding jobs. Ken's team needs a partner who shares our core values of innovation, sustainability, and trust for our products QC inspections, our packaging and assembly, and our planned product uh, rework. The climax of our story is that the Ken and OPARC teams are now collaborating, and this is creating mutual joy through enhanced sustainability for people. Uh, 30, uh, more than 30 developmentally disabled people at OPARC get jobs from Ken that they love and can grow in. It's also healthier for pets. Pets smell that our clean bowl is germ-free. They drink more water for healthier hydration. They eat their food for healthier nutrition and they enjoy healthier oral wellness. Pets cannot spit out crushed pills that are hidden in treats, food, or water. And so Ken's germ-free clean bowl and kudos pill crusher, splitter, and concealer means healthier pets who live longer, healthier lives. It's also about a healthier planet. Recycling of Ken's product components reduces greenhouse gases, electricity, water, and environmental waste. It's also about our clients' profits. Clients use Ken's products to save time and money, and they sell Ken products to enjoy recurring revenue. The first time Ken team members walk around OPARC, they are greeted by countless OPARC team members who are beaming with pride They will in their work. They will walk up to you, they will say thank you for their job, and they wish you a blessed day. If I ever think I'm having a bad day at work, I think about my walks around Oak Park and my smile returns immediately. To bring even more smiles, the Ken team is now donating slow moving inventory to Oak Park so that they can sell it to raise more cash for their operations. This makes all at Oak Park, Ken and beyond smile. And in closure with our story, we encourage you to try Ken's revolutionary products today to unite all of us in joy and to enjoy all the benefits of the four pillars of sustainability by helping pets, people, the planet, and your profits. Please visit kenninc.com forward slash pet services forward slash uh, retail opportunities today. And thank you very much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Um, that was a beautiful story. Um, and I, again, I, I hope that um, you can talk a little bit more about your, your partnership with um, OPARC because I know it's been a big piece of your business. Um, so love to hear more. Um, moving on to Portland Pet Food. Uh, Maggie, do you want to turn on your screen and take it from here? Hi, everybody. Um, I am just going to quickly overview what we do. We have five meal pouches, which are all 12 ingredients or less. They are all made and sourced entirely in the US. And then we have seven different treats. Four of them actually are, I'm gonna be talking about our upcycling process. And then the other three, we work with uh, Bob's Red Mill, which is a local company to Oregon and our facilities. So we have some major steps in a holistic approach to sustainability. We work with local farms, we means less CO2, less driving time, and we really get to build partnerships and understand where our sourcing is coming from. Our packaging is lightweight and has a lower CO2 emissions from the time it's processed in the manufacturing of the pouch itself to the actual processing of our meals, which are shelf stable for two years with no added chemicals. We also have no foil lining, which means that we're able to partner with TerraCycle, which is a mail in sustainability practice and our pouches actually get turned into plastic lumber. It's something that our customers can go onto our site, request a package from TerraCycle, they'll get an envelope, they can shove as many packages in as they possibly want to, mail it in, and TerraCycle does all the work to create a better earth. Um, and then one of our big practices is that we actually are a really truly local Portland company. Our offices and our manufacturing are local so that our employees are able to actually use public transportation 
or bike to work, we have over 70% of our employees use sustainable practices to get to home and work. And it's a wonderful way of um, supporting our local economy as well. I'm gonna talk about our upcycling, which we actually have upcycling in many different parts of our company. We use eggs in our products, but we also use egg shell, which is often a waste product. And we like to ground that up and we get minerals and fortification from a natural source. We also work with a local pork farmer and they of course have human grade, amazing bacon and pork products, but they also have a waste product, which is bacon ends and pieces. And these are very viable. They just happen to not fit the perfect shape that you see in your grocery store or at your local restaurant. And so we've partnered with them to create a sustainable way for them to use all of their pork products while we still get to use human grade, local fresh ingredients that you would find on your own dinner table. So here you can actually see what we use for our brew biscuits. And we work with local partners. Obviously we're in Portland, there's lots of breweries and lots of waste. And so we're able to work with really close by. We're talking within blocks of our facility. So we just drive over on days that they're brewing. We give them a ring, say, hey, can we pick up some spent grains today? And they happily hand them over to us because they don't know what to do with it. Otherwise, it most likely is just going to go into the trash. So in the filtering process, beer creates a waste called spent grain, which is before the sugaring and has no alcohol or hops added. So it's safe for dogs consumption. And what are spent grains? They can make up a 85% of beer's byproduct. So think about that little can that you finally get to drink and all the effort that goes into compressing that liquid out of it. It's a lot of waste. And how much spent grain is made? That's 1.7 pounds of spent grains per gallon of beer. And just think about how many breweries are around the world creating this waste product. Annually, brewers waste more than 42 million tons of edible spent grains since companies are not proactively using them in production. Potential uses, and this is becoming increasingly common, which we are so proud to be one of the forefront figures in the use of spent grains, but you can actually use spent grains in bread, in nutrition bars, and a common recycling of it is animal feed. If a brewery does feel like they can recycle, you often see that they're shipping it out to local farms nearby. Um, but again, that's a huge ask for these local smaller farms to come and pick up feed. Um, and then quite frankly, they're wet, so it's really, really heavy. Um, but the other option is that they can get turned into our brew biscuits. We partner with several local breweries, to repurpose their spent grains and our brew biscuits. And through October, 2020, we had repurposed 4,350 pounds of spent grains, and that's over 2,500 gallons of beer spent grains. Um, it's a huge part of our business practices. As I said, we really you know, see it as a holistic practice. This is just one part of what we do to create a better future. We also have a sustainability committee and they meet uh, bi-monthly to talk about how we can be better as a company in all of our sustainable business practices. Thank you. I love, um, I think someone commented about the visual. Um, so thank you for this detailed um, analysis of the upcycling process. Of course. All right, let's move on to Brian from FiberCore. Um, very excited to hear more about um, your work. And if anyone has um, their phone on them, I uh, highly recommend that you take it out and use it to see what's going on with the QR code. So uh, I'm Brian from FiberCore. And again, we make uh, the eco bedding products, as you can see. It's a paper based bedding for small animals and birds. And I got involved with this almost 15 years ago, and I was intrigued by the whole pet industry. I was intrigued by the recycling, uh, the recycled content in the, in the uh, product. And so when we took it over um, all those years ago, we, uh, we also inherited a, a relationship with, with the local group of developmentally disabled adults and to do our packaging, to do the bagging. One of the great things about eco bedding is while it's a really fabulous enrichment for small animals, gerbils and hamsters and stuff like that. It doesn't really flow that well in automated packaging systems. So all of our products are hand packed. They're hand packed by a, a couple different groups here in Northeast Ohio of um, just re remarkable people. Um, we started out with, with one county's um, workforce of adults with disabilities. And as our company has grown, we've branched out into to, uh, some of the other surrounding, surrounding uh, counties. Um, so everything we do is, is done locally here in Cleveland. 
all of our raw materials, again, are recycled um, and uh, come primarily from paper mills in the east. Uh, the bags are domestically produced. So everything, everything you see, you know, uh, with our name on it is, uh, is made in America, primarily here in, in Ohio. Um, the COVID uh, experience certainly put a damper on our ability to make stuff because as everything shut down pretty much a year ago this week, um, all of our packaging facilities um, uh, were closed by order of the governor. And so that really limited our ability to grow um, last year, but the, as they, if they started to open up again with vaccines and social distancing, um, we found that our, our packaging partners are, are much more resilient than we ever imagined, and they're 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 doing great. Um, our, our 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 recycling programs are, are work with the local dis local groups of disabled people. Um, Got, caught the eye of one of the local business magazines so many years ago. And so we ended up with the Emerald Award for Sustainable Business Practices. And this is when sustain, this is before we even heard of the Pet Sustainability Coalition. It's, um, oh, my thing just went away here. Um, so it's, 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 been, it's been on our radar for quite some time. And it's one of the reasons, again, why we got involved in this in the first place. Um, the, uh, the comeback from, uh, the COVID has helped us out a lot. And, um, and one of the things that, that we keep telling people that, is that we can promote this on our packaging is with the QR code here. Um, the bag has always been sort of the bane of our existence. I mean, we've got recycled product, we've got recycled MasterCards, but the plastic bag, what do you do with the plastic bag? So with the QR code, uh, PSC really helped us put this program together. On all of our new packaging, we've got the QR code that shows you where locally you can return the bag and get it recycled. Primarily it's grocery stores and things like that because these things don't necessarily work well in the general recycling you might do at the end of your driveway or whatnot. So this is our way to say, hey, you're probably going there anyway, take the bag of the empty bag of eco bedding with you and help you know close the loop as it were. Um, so we're trying to do as much as we can for the pet, pet environment as well as our environment and um, so far, it's it's we seem to be headed in the right direction. The bag thing was just a huge leap for us, and we're really excited about the way that turned out. It was a simple add-on to the packaging as we redid um, some of our bags, and would highly recommend it for anybody else. So that's our story. Recycle your bags. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Um, if you want to keep your video on, and then the other panelists um, want to turn on their video as well. Um, Brian, for you know, uh, companies that are interested in the um, process of adding their QR code, what does that take? Well, in our case, it took um, redoing your, your packaging because obviously you want it on everything that you send out. And we got the code um, from you guys. It was just recommended. And there's a, if you go to, if you scan this thing, it'll take you to the website, which has a very easy way to find out where you can recycle your bags. And we just added that with a little um, tag that said, you know, scan this code to figure out how to recycle the bag and uh, have been adding it slowly to all of our packaging. It's, it's simple, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a .org website, which I have not memorized because I've got the QR code. <laughs> yeah, very, very easy um, to take a photo of. Um, well, thank you. Um, so before we move into questions, um, if just want to remind everyone that's here, um, if you are interested um, in learning more about um, how these companies were able to present today, they all achieved um, top 20 status through the accreditation program um, and verified their answers on a third party assessment. Um, and showed year over year improvement with their sustainable business operations. So um, this is one of many different um, marketing benefits and support that um, these companies receive, receive um, when they achieve the accreditation. Uh, and other ways to take action with PSC um, through membership as well. Um, and both are different ways to improve the impact of your business, um, depending where you as a company are at in your sustainability journey. 
And a big thank you to Pets Plus um, for sponsoring this series. Uh, it's definitely, we've loved working with you and being able to um, continue to tell the story of values-driven retailers as well as brands. So with that, um, we'd love to move into the questions in the Q&A. Um, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna stop sharing and let's take a look at the key chat box. Let's see. Okay, um, uh, Brian, another one for you. Can you track the number of QR codes scanned? Uh, I don't think so, because it's a generic QR code that takes you to the website. So um, not that I'm aware of. Okay, okay. Um, then I just got one um, for uh, you, um, then a, if you could tell us, um, how can vendors, right? So you do a lot with retailers, um, but how can vendors get involved with e Pet? There's several ways that vendors can get involved with us. Um, I would like to say that the most important is to keep talking about it. So while to a lot of people, it may seem like, oh, this is a no brainer. It does take a lot to actually move retailers the digital age. Um, they've always been within the four walls of their store and it's it's scary. Technology is scary a lot of people. So one of the best ways to help is to talk about Etail Pet. We also have a Bark webinar series where we bring on some vendors. We do brand spotlight emails. There's lots of programs that we have. Um, if there is a vendor that is interested in working with us more directly, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at infodetailpet.com or bere, my name, B-E-R-E, detailpet.com, and uh, we can we can get started. There's lots of ways. Hello, there you go. <laughs> um, and then Penny, um, I, one for you was um, about how do you you talked about the benefits of packaging, right? And helping telling the story to customers. Um, do you have other suggestions for vendors when they're looking to like tell their story to your employees um, as well as your um, customer base? So I, I think that there's a couple of things. Number one, look at how you're packaging your things. I love what Brian had to say about figuring out what to do with the bag. Um, are you are you packaging in things that can be recycled or if not as portland pet does and we collect our customers actually bring back all this stuff that goes to TerraCycle. i have bins in my storage area where you get them involved with you can recycle this we're going to upcycle it into plastics it's a great story to tell and say bring it all back it's really easy. We box it up, we send it out to TerraCycle, and it's really become a huge thing here. <laughs> so um, the other part of it is as much as you can get a good graphic designer or a good graphic design team where they can work with you to help not only put all of the basics that you need to say on your packaging, but the attributes of what you, you are doing sustainability wise. Customers read labels, they read packaging. You know, um, Earthborn is an example. They have a thing where they replant trees for every bag that's sold. And they call that out right on the front of their bags. So there's a lot of ways that I think vendors can work to um, not only put it on the bag first, have it on your website, make sure it's on your social media. You know, those are all ways in which you can really, really tap into promoting the sustainability of your brand and have people talk about it, you know? Yeah, word of mouth. Word of mouth, videos, all sorts of ways. Definitely. Yeah, I love that. I think that's the biggest piece because it's, you have to build that trust that's there um, and go through that. So. Sorry, my headphone fell out. Um, my one question, well, let's see. Oh, Chris is very excited about <laughs> the number one benefit gained. Um, well, I guess a piece of that would be, um, Alex, if you could talk about just um, the accreditation process for you. Um, so going through the verification um, and how that's helped you improve year over year. 
Certainly. Um, well, the Kin team has been uh, collaborating with the Pet Sustainability Coalition since I think to 2016 or 17. And initially, we really didn't know what we were doing. Uh, we had great team members who believe in composting, recycling, saving water, working with disabled people. So I think we were doing a lot of good things, but we really didn't know what we were doing. And I think the way the accreditation process has helped our team is we went from not knowing at all what we were really doing and PSC pointed us in the right direction. Um, they did a case study on recycling our sugarcane fiber bowls the first year we learned through that. But they also taught us that you can never be complacent. We, we were all excited that, okay, we, we've done a case study. We, we've shared this with existing clients and prospects, but they reminded us, well, you need to keep improving and you need to keep doing more and more. And so that kind of aspire, inspires our team to keep looking to do different things. And for example, over the past year, it was probably the Pet Sustainability Coalition who said, okay, you've been working with OPARC, you've been helping all these disabled people to have jobs that they love, and you're doing all this recycling and composting and all these great things, but uh, you know, what have you done for me lately? They said it in a very uh, nice way. And so that inspired our team to say, okay, we have this slow moving inventory that we're paying to store and doesn't make any financial sense. So let's donate it to OPARC and then they can sell it uh, to raise cash for their operations. So uh, that's thanks to PSC continuing to push all of us and inspire us. We got into the top 20 in the past year. And what we're thinking about now is, well, that's great. And we're celebrating it. We're proud of it. We share it. But what are we going to do to stay in the top 20? And what are we going to do to take our game to the higher level next year? And uh, we're doing some of the things that people said. We're publishing our case study. We're doing videos talking about recycling and composting. Uh, with the pet sustainability as help, we actually develop packaging that is not for our pill crusher and splitter and concealer that not only is recyclable, but we encourage you to reuse it so you can keep reusing it many, many times. And essentially, our packaging is actually part of the product now because you stick inside of this resealable bag. So one of the things we love about PSC is they, they keep making us up our game and we got to continue to do that. So hopefully that answers your question, Sarah. It does. Thank you, Alex. Um, okay, well, we only have one minute left. Um, so I would love to um, go around round robin, looking to the rest of 2021, what sustainability um, initiative are you most excited about, right? So one or two words, doesn't have to be um, a couple sentences, you know, is it diversity, equity, inclusion? Are you thinking more about um, upcycling like we saw with Portland Pet or thinking about inclusive hiring? So um, I would, starting with you, Benet. Putting you on the spot. <laughs> Uh, I think for us, it is our team is growing a lot this year. Um, and so I think for us, it is about diversity and inclusion and making it uh, really, sorry, you just said a couple words, but just making it real, you know, not just checking boxes, but actually making a difference. Thank you. All right, Brian. Um, well, two things. One, we're finally switching to LED lighting all throughout the shop, which is just I'm excited about it. It's just, I know it's just a light bulb, but it's kind of fun. And PSC is just, you're a great motivator. And so regardless of what direction we take or what sustainability thing we, we chase after, you guys, I can't tell you enough how much, how, how important it is for us to have somebody kicking us to keep moving forward. So. Well, glad to, glad to do that for you, Brian. <laughs> uh, Chantal. So next to the inspiration we get from PSC and the kick in the butt to keep moving forward and uh, think of new initiatives we can take, uh, I'm very excited because we are building a totally new factory 
uh, we are moving to a different plant uh, in Belgium in the spring of 2022. So it should be a uh, state of the art, we call it Moderna 4.0, where we uh, talk about uh, renewable energy, uh, water recuperation, uh, all that with um, new facilities for, for staff, uh, new initiatives. So I'm very excited about that because it's a very big project. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a whole new whole new facility. Uh, Penny. Well, uh, oddly enough, this year we're really going to be focusing on food disparity. And what I think the pandemic has brought forward is how much need there is, not only for people to be able to get food for their their families, but for their pets. We uh, opened up a open forum with neighbors where they can come in and ask for free food and we will, we've will we got stock, stock back here to give them. Um, and we're working with our local rescue on their pet pantry initiative to expand that, that out to more food banks. So that's uh, one way I think that we can help people and the planet. That's amazing, thank you. All right, Maggie. I would say that our probably biggest point is obviously you guys have created amazing goals for us for this year, which is actually a huge bonus of the Pet Sustainability Coalition if uh, you do through, go through the accreditation process. But one of those main things is just with growth, continuing to keep our amazing business practices and our sourcing um, as local and sustainable as possible while um, dealing with some exponential growth that we've had in 2020 and as we have already experienced in the first quarter of 2021. Great. And Alex? I would say in one word, it's education. We need to learn how to educate our clients, our team, all of our consistencies. And even when we pick industry partners, whether it's in pet care services or pet retail, we just need to do a better job of educating people on all the aspects of what we and others do and also try to help Pet Sustainability Coalition get more members. Great. Well, thank you all for joining and um, there will be a, a recording available and I will send it later on. So thank you and have a wonderful day.